everyone this is Gail your fun stampers journey coach number 1036 today I am going to take a card directly out of our blog I wanted to make sure that you all know that we do have a blog that you can subscribe to you don't have to purchase anything uh, just you know you can go to the website www.funstampersjourney.com and click blog and you can subscribe and get your blog uh, postings every day. And I just wanted to show you one of the cards that was featured on our blog uh, last week, I believe. And I don't have all of the products, but I can certainly substitute some. So that's another thing that I will show you, is how you can substitute items when you don't have everything that you need. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to turn the camera down and we will get, go, get okay, going. Here we go. We are going to be using our Flower Swirls stamps. These are brand new. These are new in our new catalog. It's number SS0454. They are awesome. When I first saw them, I thought, well, they're not very interesting, but oh, goodness, some of the things that have been done with these have just been amazing. So we're going to use those. Um, we're going to use some Rich Coral cardstock, and it is uh, already scored. I scored it, and I'll fold that and use our awesome crease tool to put the crease in it and I'm going to put that aside because I don't need that for a while and then I have a piece of whipped cream cardstock that is four inches by five and a quarter and this is what we're going to play on right now so I'm turning this over you can see I have taken my stamps off of the acetate sheet and I've mounted them to the back of the cover that comes with the stamps because they it is plastic so it will stick to this so I'm going to be using these stamps I've got a bunch of them others that are there and let's just see what we can do I'm going to use rich coral ink our tree color fusion true color fusion ink and I'm going to start with the largest I've already got some of these mounted. Let me move some of these things out of the way. And I'm going to ink this up with the rich coral. And I'm going to stamp this sort of off center, sort of in the middle, or just, I'm starting with the largest because it's easier to fit the smaller things around it. So there's my rich coral, and I'm just going to wipe this off with a baby wipe until I'm finished, and then I'll use our wonderful stamp cleaner. And then I'm going to start going with some of the others. I think I will use... There's so many different sizes. There's four different sizes of swirls. One has leaves on it. One is just small. This one doesn't have anything particular on it. But I'm going to just maybe do this a couple times. Because I want to allow room for some of the other elements. And I'm going to stamp some off of the edge because this is going to be our background and maybe put one maybe in that corner um, let me see I think I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna do on that one And 
and I think I'm going to use the one that's got the leaf on it, even though the leaf is going to come out coral also. And I think I'll put that one there. And I don't think I will do any more of that one either. I just, I've got so many. I want to get all of these elements on there, and I don't want to fill it up too much before I have a chance to play with some of these. And these are some of the, this is the small one. I'll probably put a couple of these on here. Maybe put one there. And maybe one over here. So now we've got our swirls. Now let's put some of the other flowers that are in the same stamp kit. Like this one. This one is, well you can see here, these are the, the buds or pods or whatever they are, but I really like those. And I'm going to put them Let's see, I think I'll put one coming out here. And it doesn't matter if they overlap a little bit. And I think I'll put another one over here. I like this already. And I think I'll put another one up here. Okay, now I'll leave these out because you never know when you want to go back and put another, put another one on there. And I've got this little, this little one here, little bitty little buds or pods or something. So I thought I would try that one, put a few of those on there. Maybe in some of these areas where there's a little bit bigger room. And they can also go off the page. Let's see, what else do I want to put on there? I want to put some leaves. So I better not put any more of those. Um... Well, I actually think these are flowers. It's not going to go on that one. I'll put that on this one. You just play. You just want to fill in all of your space because you don't want a background that's got holes in it. And I think I'm going to use the little single one Maybe to come in there. And maybe right there. So just, just to fill everything in. I kind of like that. So this is, this is our basic background. Of course, we're going to do something else to it. Okay, so let me put my ink away, I believe. Well, I'm not finished with it yet, but at least I'll cover it up. And put some of my blocks away. And I'm going to get out my big block. And I'm going to use some of our new liquid color. These are awesome. And I'm going to put it, this is lemon drop and banana cream. So I'm going to put a few drops of the lemon drop. Just kind of spread it around. 
and a few drops of the banana cream. Then I'm going to use one of my misters, my medium misters, and I'm just going to spray some water on here. Because these are water-based colors. And now, I'm going to take a piece, and this, what I'm using is Glad Wrap. And I'm just going to loosely ball it up. And I'm going to pounce it on here. And then use that to color my background. Doesn't that leave an awesome effect? There. And you just throw your plastic wrap away and Use your baby wipe or a paper towel to wipe off your block, and you are back in business. But, that, but there's, there's our background, which I just love. So I'm going to let that sit and um, dry a little bit. And while we're doing, while that's drying, I want to show you some other things. I used our journey circles and cut out a piece of whipped cream cardstock and I used the um, second small, well the one that's in the very middle. It's the third from the biggest and third from the smallest. So it's right in the middle. And I also used the piercing element. So I have a pierced circle that I'm going to use for my sentiment. I also stamped out because one of the problems I had is I thought I had all of our satin ribbons and as it turns out I didn't. So instead of doing ribbon I'm going to add a couple of these little uh, stamps from the same stamp set that I stamped onto the rich coral in black licorice and because I've incorporated the black I'm going to also use our journey twine. I'm going to use the black and the candy apple. But first let me do my sentiment. And I think for my sentiment I'm going to use our decorative doily which was a bloom box um, in May. And I absolutely love it. But I'm going to use this thank you. Or maybe I'll use well wishes. I like what I like the way that looks. I was going to use thank you and everything just got changed. Let me see. Well wishes. So let me put that on my stamp block. Try to get it straight. It's one thing I am very challenged when it comes to stamping straight and out this grid on our blocks helped me so much. So I'm going to stamp well wishes, and it's the first time I've used it. Just want to make sure it's stamping cleanly, which it is. Love these red rubber stamps. And I'm going to excuse my hair, but I just want to put this right in, in the middle. So there's our sent sentiment, well wishes. And I just threw away my baby wipe, so let me just wipe this off with a paper towel. So I, until I can get that cleaned. Okay, and what else have we used? I believe that's everything that we've used so far. So I'm going to close the close this. Now I'm going to take out our cardstock, and I believe this is still a little wet. I'm going to take a heat gun to this, 
to just dry it a little bit. It'll also flatten it out. I don't know if you know this, but if you use a heat gun, the paper will curl in the direction of the heat. So when it's bowed down, this will help to flatten it out. I think that's dry enough. I love this background. So I believe I'm just looking to see something. I'm going to I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull off a piece of our black licorice thread or twine and I haven't opened the candy apple so let me find the end make it very easy for us. I just need to learn to look for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these together. I'm going to twist the, not twist them, but just put them together. And I'm going to wrap them around. Let me get these about the same length so I don't mess up too badly. And I'm just going to wrap these around here a couple times. And I'm going to tie this, I'm going to tie it into a square knot. I'm going to try to flip this on top so that it will tie this, both layers together. And when you do a square knot, I learned this in from uh, my Girl Scout days. Let me find out where this is so I can pull this straight. Just want to make sure that I don't have a lot of give in this, but you go let me come down a little bit. If you go right over left, make your first knot, and then left over right. I know my hands are doing this backwards. I'm saying it one way. But that gives us our knot. I'm going to spread this out a little bit. Just so we can see the colors a little bit better. And I think I'm going to go ahead and see if I can use the rest of this to tie a little knot. I mean, tie a little bow. And just trim this off a little bit to kind of match the other side. All right, so now we've got the little bow. I think I'm going to take my sentiment. Let me slide this down a little bit. Take my sentiment and I'm going to pop it up right there. So let me get my, excuse the back of my sentiment. This was something I was trying to print something for a birthday card and it didn't turn out and I didn't want to waste the paper so I used the other side. But I'm going to pop this up. Sorry if I was out of the camera. 
have a tendency to move while I'm working. But I'm going to put well wishes. I might just tuck it. Un well, no, because I've already popped it up. I'm just going to kind of put that sort of in the center. doesn't have to be in the center. Pull my little bow over it. Then I'm going to also pop up these. And I think I need a little foam square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me get my detail scissors. I'm going to cut one in half. put down here because it's just too big and the other half I'm going to put down here at the end of the stem hopefully that won't show because it's going to be up underneath anyway I'm going to put the big flower on there first I'm going to tuck that right in there and then pull pop this up um, where do I want this maybe up under here or should I have it over here maybe over here oops don't stick There. So who needs candy apple ribbon? Although that is what this calls for. But if you don't have it, you can always make do with something else. Now, I've also I want to put some sparkle silk on here, although I don't want to put sparkle silk on my sentiment. I should have thought of that before I before I stuck it on. So I'm just going to cut a little piece of a post-it note. If it gets on the rest of it, I don't care. But let me try some got some somewhere. Sorry about this, I'm not very organized. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to use our sparkle silk. Which I love. I put it on everything. Just adds a little bit of sparkle. Oh, I know what I can use. I can also put some gold on here. Gold would look pretty. Let me get some gold. Just mix it up till you get all the gold off the bottom. heard my phone. It's just there. Can you hear the the rattle? It's a little BB in there. So let me put some of this on there. Okay. and pull my post-it note up so my well wishes are there then I'm going to take my 
card base. And I'm going to pop this panel up. What does Richard say? When in doubt, pop it out. I'm begin I'd never used to add dimension to my cards until I started with Fun Stamper's Journey and started watching all the wonderful things that Richard does with dimension. I'll put one on the sides just because this is a long card. And I have just fallen in love with foam squares. I can't tell you how many of them I go through. And let me pull this up. And put this here. Let me see if I can get it lined up properly. Sometimes I find it easier to go from the top where the fold is. And there we go. And there is our card. Now you could take it one step farther, which I probably will. And I'm going to add some journey glaze. Except I need to take the cover off. At least I know it's not going to be clogged up. Well, this is the new tip. Okay, that's why I was wondering what, why this was all happening like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little glaze to each one of these little individual little rosettes. And you can leave them this way if you want. You know, so that they'll have a shine to it. But you know what? I'm a glitter person. So let me put this on here on my media tray and I'm going to sprinkle it with some sparkle cuts just to add a little bit more glitter. I don't think that's enough. And I may do the same thing on the big one, although I'm not going to cover the entire rose. I just think I'm going to put some swirls. I was told if you hit the table with your journey glaze, it goes out of the tip and into the jar and it doesn't get stopped up. And this won't take as quite as much. But there you go. I love this card. It says well wishes. See the sparkle on the flowers? You've got the silks <coughs> Pardon me. The silks on the card itself, which add some glimmer and shine. I like this card, and it came straight from came straight from our um, our blog. So please look at our blog every day. Something is going to be on there that you like. I know today they had the. Um, July bloom box and then also an explanation to our new uh, guidelines for the bloom box that you might be interested in. So go ahead and subscribe to the blog and every once in a while you'll have these. On Tuesdays we get Richard's tips. It's Richard's Tip Tuesday. So uh, you never know what you're going to get but this is our card direct from the blog. So I want to thank you, and I'll be back soon with another pretty card uh, from Fun Stamper's Journey. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Bye-bye.